Good morning, everyone. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Yeah. Now that the craziness of the holiday season is, is uh, subsiding, we can get back to normal. I like normal. I've never been normal, but I like normal. <laughs> Let's start this morning with a song. No longer a slave. You 
rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Amen. Take a seat, church. Good morning. What a good reminder at the start of 2024. I am a child of God. I have been liberated. I am, and all those other great verses that I can't remember right now, (laughs) but it's always good to remind ourselves, isn't it? How are we? We okay? Apologies for the dip in temperature. Uh, For some reason, the timer failed this morning, so we didn't put the heating on until 9 o'clock. But within an hour's time, you're going to be sweating, so you'll have to take your coat off, Kev. Okay? Is that okay? Good stuff. Um, It's great to see you. Happy New Year. uh, Christmas is done. It's over with. Hallelujah. All your decorations down? Get rid of it. Rubbish. Anybody else, though, when you go to your living room and the tree is suddenly gone, you go, why don't we just leave a tree up in there all the time? Does anybody else think about having a tree in the corner? I I would like a tree, yeah. Uh, You've got one. A silver birch. Bit big for your living room, isn't it? Touches the ceiling. Awesome. It's a jungle. Uh, Just a few notes before we get going uh, with the rest of our service this morning. Um, We kind of had a, 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 obviously we've had a bit of a Christmas break and so everything is kind of picking up this week and next week. So just to remind you this week, uh, the hub is open Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Rachel. Good to see you back. Uh, So Tuesdays and Wednesdays, half past 10 till two o'clock, the hub is open. If you would like to volunteer this year, We would love you to volunteer this year, so uh, come and speak to Rachel, that would be awesome. Uh, Tuesday night, we start our discipleship nights again. This week, we're just going to meet and pray, Uh, but next week, we are starting a course that is called How to Be Unsuccessful. Sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, So, I would love you to come and join that with me. Uh, It'll be on a half... On a Tuesday night at half past seven, How to Be Unsuccessful uh, is based on a book through the 24-7 prayer um, network and uh, based on the Beatitudes and how we measure success and where our goals and intentions and aims are and what we kind of count as uh, success. Uh, So it's six weeks, seven weeks, I believe, starting next Tuesday and, and it would be great for as many of you lovely, lovely people to come and join us at half past seven. But this week, we're just praying for an hour at half past seven. Also, prayer space, Monday, uh, 11 o'clock is on as well. Tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock. And also, some of you will, uh, would have joined Patsy uh, in previous weeks uh, for a pre-service prayer meeting uh, to stoke the fires before our Sunday gathering. Uh, It starts at 10 o'clock, is that right, Patsy? Yeah, 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning, come and join uh, us, not me, uh, but others. Uh, I'm too busy running around doing stupid things, Um, good things that need to be done, but just, you know what I mean. Shut up, Liam. If if I'm not trying to fix something or print something out, I will join you, I will join you, I will join you. So that's every Sunday morning. Uh, So Monday, prayer, 11. Tuesday night, next week. This week, pray, next week. How to be unsuccessful. Squiggle starts on Friday again. 10 till 12, toddler group. Parent, guardian, toddler. That's what it is. That's what it says on the tin, 10 till 12. It's a great little morning, lots of fun. Um, And uh, Limitless starts again on Wednesday 
night, half past five. If you know any children that need something to do on a Wednesday night for a couple of hours, uh, we provide a meal. We provide lots of fun and activities. Uh, we topped this last year off by taking, I can't remember how many we took ice skating. Lots. Yeah, it was lots. And um, it was lovely. It was really, really nice. A couple of the kids have never been ice skating before. And they absolutely loved it. And it was just so nice because actually some of those kids probably wouldn't have been given the opportunity to go ice skating. So we topped the year off really, really well. So looking forward to get back and into things this Wednesday for pre not preschools because they're, they're, they're at Squiggles. Uh, but primary school kids, secondary school kids come along half past five till seven o'clock. And families, if they want to come along as well and, and have some food with us, that's perfectly fine. So that's Wednesday, Friday, done. There is no church community group this week. It starts again next week. So next week, next Wednesday, if you're part of the church community group or you're free and would like to get involved with the church community group, uh, feel free to come along at half past ten next Wednesday. The 17th, yes. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. And just uh, last but not least, the Empower evening is on January the 20th. So Empower being our men's ministry. Don't ask me about women. Uh, men's ministry is on the 20th of January, which is a Saturday. Ooh. And we're having curry. You cooking? Charlie and Mohan, curry special. Yes, Mohan! Smile! I'm looking forward to some of your kebabs. Mohan's kebabs are hot and lovely. So I'm looking forward to that. So that's uh, Saturday, the 20th of January, 6 till 8. Uh, we're going to start strong. It'd be great to see you. Come and join us. That is enough of me for now. Let's stand. Let's start the, uh, the year strong in song, in thanksgiving, in praise. I believe Colin has a request. Uh, he's going to take your requests for next week. Am I right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so thinking about what it says in the Bible about um, one will bring a song, one will bring a word from the Lord. And I thought, why not ask the congregation what they want us to sing next week? So, song requests. If you've got an idea now, if you want a song that you're just dying for us to do, let us know now or we'll afterwards. Up to you. Anyone got a song request? Be still for the presence of the Lord. Matthew, what's that one? Glory, glory. Okay, glory, glory. 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 All right. And then, so, yeah, have a little think and let us know. Uh, no, shine, Jesus, shine. That's no banned. Shine, I have the authority and power to veto any song that I either can't do or don't like. Yeah. <laughs> and we can only have six. We, we can only have six. It's like, it's like the lottery. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so that's something to look forward to next week. Um, but this week, we're going to... I started preparing for just as I normally do at the start of a year, a, uh, a word, uh, a subject, something that we need to hone into for the rest of the year. Uh, last year, I talked about uh, being fully intentional, uh, talking about a great football manager called Marcelo Bielsa, who unfortunately was sacked from Leeds United about three weeks after I preached. Um, and we got relegated, so it didn't, it didn't end very well. But we're doing all right now. We're doing all right now. But as I was preparing uh, for today, I just kind of felt the nudge that we're going to go, it's going to be extended. So it's not just for this week, but a series called Deeper as we start our year. As we kind of set forth, ready to journey into this year. We don't know what's in front of us. We know what's been behind us. We can look forward to what's in front of us because of somebody who's by our side today. And I wonder if you can just focus for a minute, someone can please, and just think about who you're going to be 
at the end of this year and how you're going to get there and what you need to do and what it looks like and all those kind of things. But don't bog yourself down because he is with us. His Holy Spirit is with us by our side. Father, we welcome you this morning. We're fully aware of who you are, fully aware of your presence. And Lord, we want to step into 2024 fully intentional, ready to go deeper, ready to be transformed and changed by the renewing of our minds in a partnership with you, Holy Spirit. So we ask you, we invite you to come and invade this place. Would you move through our worship this morning? Would you move through the word this morning? Would you move as we gather this morning, Lord, and begin to sow seeds, to establish roots, to bring change and transformation into our lives, Lord? In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen.
darkness were waste without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to the failed Lord and prophets, to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to the cradle. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you sought to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. Pray.
I see nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now by this I'll overcome. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now by this I'll reach my home. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. precious there's no life without the blood there's no forgiveness without the blood there's no freedom without the blood there's no ransom paid without the blood there's no redemption without the blood there's no life without his blood how precious is his flow father we thank you this morning for Jesus Jesus we thank you that joyfully even knowing the price that you were going to have to pay, you walked willingly to your death. You allowed it all to happen so that that blood would flow, that we would be set free, that we would be forgiven, that we would be ransomed, that we would receive eternity. Jesus nothing but the blood. Father, would you remind us 
Would you cause us to be reminded, Lord, that when we pursue other things in this life, looking for joy, looking for peace, looking for success, looking for life, looking for purpose, looking for meaning, Lord, it is pointless without your blood. Thank you, Father. You gave us all that we need today to walk into a loving relationship with you, Jesus. How precious and how thankful that we are. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We're simply reminded this morning that it is always about the blood. It is always about Jesus. It is always about his crucifixion. And as we start this year, 2024, this is the best place to be. Hope Community Church. <laughs> but around the table together as family, remembering what it's all about and remembering why we gather and remembering that it's all about the blood. So we're going to take time now for a few minutes. Feel free to join your church family around these tables on my right and on my left. Just share communion with each other. Setting forth 2024. Jesus, I'm putting you in primary place in my life today. Maybe you've taken communion a million times. Maybe you've never taken communion today. That's not important. The important thing is that you are welcome around this table this morning. You are welcome to take the bread and the wine. It's not wine. Cranberry juice. But it's a symbol of his broken body and his shed blood that unites us together as brothers and sisters today. That purchases our life that washes as white as snow. What a gift. What a gift. And what a gift to enjoy it with your church family this morning and receive his forgiveness once again. Maybe this, this week you've done some stupid things. That's okay. We're all stupid. We've all done stupid things. You'd be surprised the stupid things that are in this room. We can come to this table again, receive him again, receive his forgiveness again, and set forth the year ahead. So I invite you just to come and join us at the front, and your brothers and sisters. And Jesus, we welcome you to minister to our hearts this morning as we take up the blood, the bread and the wine. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, Lord. Seal us this morning, Lord. Seal us this morning in communion with you. Lord, help us to receive the grace upon grace upon grace, Lord, that is on offer to each one of us this morning. That we would receive and we would walk into it. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made to bring light to the whole world. And that's a massive thing, but Lord, you brought light to my world personally and to my heart. And I thank you, God, that you did that. And I thank you, Lord, that I thank you, Lord, that you made a difference in my life. And God, and I just want to thank you that, that you're my light to my feet that your word guides my path and I just thank you God that that my life is set out before me and I know that it's safe and secure in your will whether I undergo hardships or whether my life is easy Lord God you set out my path Lord and I just want to thank you Lord Must be more than this. Oh, breath of God, come breathe with it. There must be more than this. Spirit of God, we wait for you. Fill us anew, we pray. Fill us anew. Like a rushing wind, clothe us with power from on high. Now set the captive free, leave us abandoned to your praise. Lord, let your glory fall. Lord, let your glory
open our hearts to pass before your name. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, the passion for your name. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, the passion for your name. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, the passion for, the passion for your name. Consuming fire. Fall into flame, a passion for your name, Spirit of God, fall in this place, Lord have your way, Lord have your way, consuming fire, fall into flame, a passion for your name, Spirit captured by your holy calling set me apart i know you're drawing me to yourself leave me lord i pray guide me hold me you Beside me, 
you only have to look through Scripture and look at the life of Jesus to see that Christianity is a life of sacrificial love. Christianity is a life of surrender, of obedience, of submission, of our own will. And every now and again, we just have to remind ourselves and give ourselves again and hand over our will and our hearts, our minds. That this isn't about us. This is about Him in us. And how we can serve him and love him and offer our lives as a sacrifice for him to see him fulfill that what he came to do, to see the kingdom of God move. Sometimes that's easy, sometimes that's really, really hard. But God honors and blesses our obedience. He gives us strength in our surrender. He gives us grace when we fail. But he always asks us to take a step towards him away from ourselves. That he would become greater. So Father, this morning, We give ourselves again. We want to be shaped by you, Jesus. We want to be shaped by you, Father, that we would be molded and formed and shaped, chiseled, challenged at times. We give you our lives again afresh at the start of this year, Father. Fill us, use us, lead us and guide us, Lord, that we would be the men and women of God, Lord, that you've called us to be, that we would be, Lord, set apart in your hands by your grace. Holy Spirit, help us because we need help. I can't do this on my own. We can't do this on our own. We need you every day. Thank you for your grace. Amen. Amen. We're just going to do a couple of things before we come around the word. Thank you, worship team. We are going to, because I forgot, we're going to take up our offering. Uh, We're also going to say hello to each other. And we're going to say goodbye to our children as they run away from us through the doors on our left-hand side. So if you would like to do any of those, feel free to do it now. If you would just like to stay in your seat, then that's up to you. Amen. Derek's the man with the bag if you want to put some goods in there.
wonderful, wonderful. That took me about two minutes. That is me, yeah, on the roof of Kingston, yeah. Me and the wife. Good stuff. Let's uh, grab our seats, shall we, as we we're on course to finish at 12 o'clock. Start the year as you mean to go on. I do. Let's see. Good. Um, we're going to be, this morning, uh, we're going to be starting in uh, Ezekiel, if you have a Bible. If you haven't, that's fine. Uh, the words are on the Sky Bible behind me. So uh, we're going to be in the ESV. Uh, if you haven't got a Bible or you would like a Bible, we have some Bibles on the table here. They're free to you as a gift. Um, you'll need good glasses or good eyes, but feel free to come and grab one if you need it. Um, so, yeah, as, as I said, I, I normally kind of the first Sunday of the year kind of come around something that um, it's, it's more my prayer than anything else, but I, I, I want to share it with, uh, with you guys and kind of almost set course of um, where my heart is for, the, for each year um, before doing anything else. And as I was kind of thinking about this over the last kind of six to eight weeks, I kept coming back to this passage in Ezekiel 47 um, and kind of just uh, thinking, thinking about it and honkering down in it and... Um, believe that it's it's a message for each one of us this morning um, and actually when I was finishing it off uh, yesterday morning um, I kind of felt prompted to actually start a series in it rather than it just being a standalone message so uh, we're going to be uh, stuck in this series for a number of weeks I don't know how long it's going to be just yet um, I have a few ideas but um, hopefully uh, it, it'll be good. And um, I've called it Deeper for one reason, uh, because uh, can you just put it back on the other slide for a minute, Dan? Uh, do you like me and Hannah were at the beach the other day and um, we, we got Sam to take a photo of us uh, just and then I thought, do you know what? I'll use it. I don't want to put you all to shame, men, but that is me. What? Yeah, yeah. And did you know there's whales in uh, Bournemouth Beach now? Actually, just, just a reminder, before we do anything else, Hannah Dendy, uh, this month, is jumping in the sea every morning uh, because she's living the Southbourne life now. Uh, but also, she is raising money for her mission, which is in March, and she's going to Guatemala. Uh, yes, it is said, Guatemala. She's going to Guatemala uh, for a month. Four months. Oh, I just thought, four months, four months, she's going, and she's jumping in the sea, and she needs a bit of cash for it, so she's hoping that some poor soul will feel sorry for her and give her a few quid for jumping in the sea. Uh, so, uh, come and speak to her afterwards, she's got a just giving thing all set up and all that kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, so you're in the sea this morning, can you imagine that? It's not very warm this time of year. Uh, and no wetsuit, she's just straight in. Yeah, in her pyjamas. So, away from that, I'm, set, I'm trying to finish at 12, I promise. Um, oh, there you go. There's, there's your first pound. What does Scripture say? Don't despise the day of small things. Thank you, Jesus, for a pound. That's just a few more grand moving forward to go, but you're in it. Uh, and we can't wait to see what happens for four months. Four months? What a holiday. It's, it's the only reason you're going, isn't it, for a holiday in Guatemala? Guatemala. Oh, that'd be lovely. Um, 
Anyway, right, so Ezekiel 47, if you've got a Bible, uh, we're going to read through to chapter, to, to chapter 49. No, we're not. We're going to read through to verse uh, 12, uh, and then we're going to uh, jump into this morning's message. Verse 1 says, then he brought me back to the door of the temple. So this is a vision that Ezekiel is having. And behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced the east. The water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out by way of north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces towards the east. And behold, the water was trickling out on the south side. Going out eastward with a measuring line in his hand, the man measured a thousand cubits and then led me through the water and it was ankle deep. Verse 4. Again, he measured a thousand and led me through the water and it was knee deep. And he measured a thousand and led me through the water and it was waist deep. Again, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass through for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be passed through. And he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. And as I went back, I saw on the bank of the river very many trees on the one side and on the other. Verse 8, and he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah and enters the sea when the water flows into the sea. The water will become fresh. And wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live and there will be very many fish. For this water goes there that the waters of the sea may become fresh so everything will live where the river goes. Fishermen will stand beside the sea from Engedi to England. It will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of very many kinds like the fish of the great sea. But its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are be to be left for salt. And on the banks on both sides of the river there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither nor their fruit fail. But they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water from them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Amen. That's lovely. Lovely bit of scripture. There are several references throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament about rivers and their, their spiritual implications, their significance in both um, Old Testament and New Testament, like I say. And in this passage, this, whole, this reference uh, signifies the flow of God's Spirit taking us deeper and deeper until He has full control of our lives. How many of you have been to the sea? Not now, because you'd be nuts to go in the cold sea now. But when you go, you go, oh, the sea, I love the sea. And it's to be admired. And it's to be respected as well. Because when you go in ankle deep, it's lovely. And, you know, you can kick about. And when your feet get cold, you can jump back out again. And you can heat up again. And then you can jump back in again. And you can just do that. And you, you are still in control. And then if you want to, you can go out a little bit more and you can go a little bit knee deep and it's nice and it's, it's sunny and there's kids screaming over there and it's, you're still in control. The water's lapping up and it's, it's nice and you can get back out at any point. And then you can go in and, you know, if you're feeling brave and it's nice temperature, you can go up to your waist. And when you're waist deep, you begin to feel the, the force of the water just a little bit more. You, you're up here and, you know, half of you is submerged and you can still go back if you want to, but you begin to feel and you could, if the current is strong enough, it could take you all around. Especially if you're in a dinghy and you want to go one way and you end up the other. If you're into your waist, you're just going all around and you can feel that force. If you're brave enough, you can go into your face, well, like your chin. Have you ever been in there, just stood in the sea and just, it's quite hard, isn't it? You have to bob, don't you? That's me bobbing in the sea. And then you are fully, you're fully in the flow 
of the water. You've got no choice but to just allow yourself to flow in the water because you, you can't, you just about tread on the floor and when you bounce, you move a little bit more. This is a workout. It's like holy aerobics. But you, you are fully, fully under, you are fully being controlled by the water rather than yourself. And if you're not very good at swimming, you best not go out that far. You just have a breather. Ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, or up to your neck. It's the same as our walk with God and our walk with Jesus. And this scripture talks about the Holy Spirit flowing through our lives. And I want to talk to you this morning about spiritual maturity. And I believe at the course of this coming year, our intention is for each one of us to focus on our own spiritual maturity. Throughout scripture, there are images of what I have been working out this week. I promise you, I am not this unfit. I'm normally okay. But images of water are used in Scripture and generally are used to signify the Holy Spirit. And in Ezekiel's vision, we see this river flowing out of the temple of God, which Jesus addresses in the Gospel of John. Talks about rivers of living water that would flow out of us in verse 9 in this morning passage. And it encourages us with this, and I love it. Everything will live where the river goes. When we look at this being the Holy Spirit, when, where the Holy Spirit is present, there is life. And everywhere where the Spirit goes, there will be life. And so if we want to live, we want to be open up to the Spirit. If we want to thrive, we want to be up to the, open up to the, uh, 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 open to the Holy Spirit. Under the new covenant, we are the temple of God. Because he dwells in us and his spirit flows through us and out of us. Jesus says in John 7, 38, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. You believe in Jesus, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. And God is interested in you encountering his living water. And allowing his living water to be present in your lives. And uh, allowing his living water to bring life and to join us on this process of spiritual maturity. Mark 12. Dan, if you could put the Mark 12 verse up for me. My phone is not working today or I would have done this. Sorry. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate you, mate. Looking handsome as ever with his beard. I've got beard envy when I look at Dan. Mark 12, verse 30, says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. You. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is spiritual maturity. For those of us who, uh, for, for those that don't yet know Jesus, the first thing that they don't do is love God with their heart. When we make a decision, when the Holy Spirit invades us, when we open up our hearts, the first thing that we receive is the Holy Spirit in us and we begin to love God with all our heart. And it starts us on a process. Love is a sign of growth in spiritual maturity. And we can often get sidetracked into thinking that other things are the goal. So you could believe, right, right, in, in 2024, my goal is to go to church more. Or you could remember the whole Bible more, or the Psalms more. Or your goal could be, I'm going to pray for an hour every day. Or you could, we could think that our goal is simply just to attract more people into our building. 
Or my goal is to engage in worship a little bit more and get a bit more emotional and a bit more passionate and get myself stirred up. That could be our goal. But his goal for you, as you grow spiritually, is for you to grow in love. If love is God's goal for us as we grow in Christ, then would you ask yourself this morning, am I growing in love with God? Am I growing in love with God more and more each day? Do I love other people now more than I ever before? Spiritual maturity means we allow ourselves to love those who cannot reciprocate. It's a good word. Reciprocate. It's the agenda is to love through good deeds, good words, being kind, being loving, being graceful. And it constantly builds our capacity to love. The more that we love, the more that we grow in love. There is always someone around us that needs a bit of love. Don't get sidetracked and satisfied with anything else. You could come to church every single week, but if you're not growing in love, you may as well stay at home. That is the goal, to grow in love. And it's that sacrificial Christ-like love that will be the ultimate sign of our spiritual growth. And this love looks like a million different things. It's almost the, the cement that brings everything together. And it's the sign of our spiritual maturity. And spiritual maturity is about growing in holiness. When we love God with our hearts, with our soul, with our mind, with our strength, it's about holiness. When we grow in love for God, our lives begin to change. When we love God, we change. When God saves you, he forgives your sins and he sends his Holy Spirit in your heart and he puts his seal of ownership on your life and he says, this one is mine. I am a child of God. And from that moment on, you are headed for heaven and nothing can keep you out. But God does not want you to remain just like you were, morally, emotionally, spiritually. He wants you to grow. He has declared that you are his child, and now he wants you to start living like his child. That doesn't happen in a moment. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen with one book. It doesn't happen with one prayer. It doesn't happen with going to church every single week. It happens over a course of years. And if you have really become his child and his Holy Spirit is inside of you, then he will be helping you to make some changes in your life. I'm not talking about a diet. He wants you to look after yourself. And, and you know, if you ask him to help you resist Greg's, then, you know, he just might do. He might do. But real change. And if you call yourself a Christian today, you will be able to look back since day one, since this whole journey of faith, I can see what God has been doing in my life. I can see how I've changed. Now, I'm not talking about the dramatic things all the time. They're the easy things. They're the easy things. I haven't touched gear in 17 years. Hallelujah. I love that. That's easy. That was easy. But learning to battle with my anger problem, that's a bigger problem. That needs more change and that needs more Jesus in my life. Are you with me? There's deeper things that God wants to do in my life than just stop me using drugs. A whole array of things that he wants to bring about in my life. That he is in the process of working in me. How to be a husband. 
I need him in my life to be a better husband. How to be a father. I need him in <laughs> at work in my life to be a better father, to be a better son, to be a better person. I need him in my life to chisel away the rough stuff that life has given me. And when you look back, you can see those changes. She's a little raver. Have you, honestly, just a picture of joy at the front. Awesome. And change happens very simply, small, surely and smallly. Is that a word? It is today. Day by day. If you call yourself a Christian, how have you changed? Have you changed enough that people can see a difference in your life? Have you learned to walk with God daily and allowed him to make changes in your life? And, 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 and listen, I, you need to know this and understand this. You aren't saved because you're clean. You clean your life up. You're not saved because you stop speeding. You're not saved because of your behavior. You will never be perfect until the day that God calls you home. But when God's spirit is really in your life, you will not continue to be the same as you were. You get a conscience, and it beats you up. I could run away from my conscience very easily for a long time, and you couldn't tell me a thing that I did wrong. I could justify anything that I wanted to do and get on with it. But suddenly now I have a conscience, and I'm grateful for that conscience because it keeps me on the straight and narrow, and God speaks to me, don't do that, don't do this, you're an idiot. That's how he speaks to me. Liam, an idiot. Go back home and say sorry. Norm, it takes me about two days. It takes me about two days. But I say sorry. I never used to. It's not guilty. <laughs> not guilty. No comment. You will not continue living thoughtlessly and repeatedly making the same mistakes, repeating the same pattern of behaviours. We all make mistakes, okay? We, we all make mistakes. And I, I fully believe, and this isn't, this isn't motivational speaking, this isn't inspirational speaking, but I believe when you make a mistake, the best thing that you can do is learn from it. That's why we make mistakes. If I walk down the same street every single day and I walk down the same, fall into the same hole with the same circumstances and by day five I haven't changed the street that I'm walking down, I'm an idiot. Some of you are saying, Amen, Liam. But at some point that mistake will prompt me to go, maybe you just want to walk down the other street. And so I learn from it. And that's what life gives us, opportunities to learn. I know now that you shouldn't commit crime. It took me 26 years to realise that I shouldn't commit crime. Yeah, about 26 years, yeah. I mean, I started shoplifting when I was about five, okay? So that's a good, a good history. Pick and mix. Cheese and onion walkers, cans of Coke. I think the per people in the shop just felt sorry for me, but I had to go out and my brother would hit me, so I had to. Anyway, mistakes are opportunities for it to learn. God wants you to learn from your mistakes. Now, I, I, don't, I don't need you to bring me a list of your mistakes because you know your mistakes, and God reminds you. It's not my job to make you feel rubbish about your life. And it's not God's. But he wants you to lead you through it so that you can go deeper with him. So that you can love him more with your heart, with your soul, with your mind, with your strength. Spiritual maturity is growing with our minds. You've got a brain. I didn't use it for quite some time. I ran away from my own brain for quite a long time. And took it places, strange places, very strange places. And I'm glad I'm not there now. But we're called to love God with our mind. That means that we need to think about our faith. 
That we mean we need to exercise this muscle in our brain. Philippians 1 verse 9 says, this is Paul saying to the church in Philippi, it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and be pure and plain, blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Mature Christian love is not just about having good feelings and good emotions about people all of the time. God wants our love to be characterized by knowledge and discernment. Wisdom. And this word that we translate real knowledge here, epignosis, does not mean to know something in your mind. It means to really understand something. The Bible word discernment here means to perceive, almost to cut through fog and be able to discern what is really there, what is really going on. Wisdom and discernment, we need to be praying for that all of the time. And we need to grow in wisdom and discernment all of the time. Spiritually, it means that you can see through the fog to God's truth about a situation. God wants us to see through the clouds of of the deceptions that exist in our world to what is really biblical. So that you may approve the things that are excellent. And I found over the years that many of us as Christians are good-hearted people and we want to believe the best about people and we want to think that they mean well and that they aren't teaching heresy and that they aren't trying to deceive us. But this is also can be one of our greatest weaknesses which characterizes the 21st century church. Most of us do not have a mature spirit of discernment like Paul wants here. People fall for fad. People fall for fashion. People fall for whatever looks nice and shiny and smoky and glamorous, whether it's biblical or not, it doesn't matter. And there are so many examples, including the opinion that we all need to do as Christians, and I've heard this a million places, just focus on Jesus. Don't read your Bible. Just focus on Jesus. Don't read your Bible. But the problem with that is if we don't know about Jesus, we won't know about Jesus if we don't know our Bible. We would never be introduced to Jesus if we hadn't opened a Bible. So suddenly to, oh, well, I'm just going to know Jesus and I'm going to leave the word out of this picture, that doesn't happen because suddenly Jesus becomes your Jesus, how you shape and mold him, how you want him to look, and not the Jesus of Scripture. All Scripture is inspired by God and it is profitable. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Psalms teaches the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God tells us in his word that we must not take our focus off the Bible. And so if we're going to grow in love for God with our minds, we need to grow in knowledge and understanding and discernment of the Scriptures. We need more discernment that comes from Bible, not less. And you see, many churches and many Christians build their whole lives and ministries around the next big fad that is... Uh, 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 and they don't stop. Well, hang on a minute. Is this biblical? Is this biblical? It may be attracting thousands of people through the door, but is it biblical? Where are you taking them? What are you teaching them? Where are you leading them? And God says in his word that he wants us to look past the next fad. He wants to look f- us to look through the fog, past the popular preacher, And he wants us to grow in maturity and biblical knowledge and to learn to use our own discernment. Just because they sell it at the Christian bookstore doesn't mean it's biblical. It means that it brings a bit of cash. Just because it's on God TV doesn't mean it's biblical. It just brings a bit of cash. Just because they call it Christian doesn't mean that you should buy it. It just brings a bit of cash. See the motive here? Cash. Just because they call themselves a Bible teacher doesn't mean that you need to be listening to them. They just want your cash. 
Just because all the other churches are doing it doesn't mean that we should do it, especially in this age when we're seeing more and more moral and spiritual deterioration in our society. There are going to be all kinds of things in the days ahead which are going to be popular, but they're not going to be biblical. And as Christians, we're not called to be popular. We're called to be set apart. We're called to be different. We're called to look different. We're called to smell different. Some of you smell really different. Hmm. So as we grow in maturity as Christians, we grow in wisdom and discernment. We can, we can spot a lie. We can spot a fad. We can, be, we can spot something that's not biblical. We must use our minds. We have to. We begin to wrestle with theology. We begin to wrestle with questions. It's through our theology that we begin to understand the whole picture of who God is. So someone can come to you and go, da 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 and you go, no, no, no. Say it slow. No. We need to know him. We need to understand him. We need to wrestle with the deeper things to set ourselves on solid ground. And as we grow older, we need to change this, the food intake. My daughter, little B, for a long time, she just had little meals and little bit of milk and little bit of this. And now she can smash a pasta bake in no time. Or sausages. Or cake. <laughs> Fruit. She loves a watermelon. It's gone in two, two minutes. Her food has changed as she's grown. As Christians, our food intake needs to change as we grow. Because if you're still being bottle fed from the front, you're not going to grow. My boys can now make their own food most of the time. It's limited at the minute. It's a lot of mess, but they can do it. We've, we've helped them get up in the mornings and make their own packed lunches. We have to be able to get up each day ourselves and feed ourselves. Good food. Good food. And we have to mature. As we do this, we, we mature in faith and our spiritual diet becomes more dense, deeper. We need to begin to cultivate our desire for understanding. Spiritual maturity. Next page, don't worry. I, I was on time. I'm not now. Too busy dancing. Stop it. Spiritual maturity is being part of genuine community. Meeting together with others is valuable. And I'm not talking about coming together on a Sunday morning, but that is precious. When the corporate church unites in praise and worship, there is a presence that you will not experience on your own walking down the street. But community is also meeting up one or two or three or four of you and asking yourself some big questions and being honest and open with each other. And it's something that we all need to grow in. It's something that as a church we need to grow in. We need to be more intentional with our relationships, with community. Come into a place where we are free to be ourselves. Fully. Fully open. Fully honest. Fully vulnerable. Not a Sunday face. But ourselves. Where you allow yourself times and places for honesty and vulnerability and I'm struggling. I need help with this. Can I help you with this? Where we're all in this thing together and we're not scared of sharing those deeper things. And I hope and pray that now you've got people around you that you can share those deeper things with. Because we all need it. All of the time underpinning this whole thing with fervent prayer. We need to grow in prayer to be spiritually mature. Now, prayer that's beyond, thank you for my food and heal me of my veruca. 
God wants to take us deeper in prayer than you just praying for your foot allergy. Can you have a foot allergy? You can have allergies on your foot. Can you be allergic to feet? You know what I mean? I'm allergic to feet. Prayer that refreshes and reminds us of who God is. Prayer that unites us. Prayer that speaks to our, 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 our ups and downs of life and breaks us out into passionate worship and allows the Holy Spirit to minister into our hearts, not just some dead, well, we'll pray for da 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 amen, we'll go home. We're, gonna, we're, we're trying to foster these environments together. Come on. God wants to take us deeper. I don't think he's happy with you and your ankles. Not, not that he's got anything wrong with your ankles, but he wants to take you deeper. Deeper. Fully submitted. Spiritual maturity is growing in sharing our faith. You don't have to be a theologian to share what God has done in your life. You don't have to be. And the more we share our faith, the more the good news of Jesus spreads. It's that simple. And when you begin to share your faith, it enhances the passion for your own faith. You're reminding yourself of who God is as you boldly proclaim it. When we first meet Jesus, you can't shut us up. But the majority of the church become very quiet and lose the joy in sharing faith and become fearful. We need to open our mouths more about who he is. Don't be scared of upsetting the world. It's only going one way. This whole thing is about a journey together of discipleship. The more we grow deeper, the more we grow, the deeper we go. The more we grow and mature, and mature the greater the impact God has in our lives. That we become completely different. A non-anxious, joyful, peaceful presence. Like a child. So as we look forward into 2024, let's be ready to go deeper. Let's get ready to go deeper. And I want to... I want to ask you this, where could you begin to walk a little bit deeper this year? Where are you your most comfortable? It may be time to get uncomfortable. Where do you want to go deeper? When you look at your life now, right, where do you see that you need to change? Ask the Holy Spirit, search my heart. He'll let you know. Where do you feel challenged this morning? Maybe God just wants to lead you this morning by your hand into streams of living water and watch all that amazing fruit come to life. Because where he is, everything will live where the river goes. He wants us to know him more, to love him more, to be with him more. Transform our lives to be more like Jesus, to be more like Christ, to be disciples. And that's where we're going this year. There'll be uncomfortable conversations, uncomfortable topics from the front. We're going to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you're always with us. That, Lord, when we go from ankle to knee to waist up to our necks, Lord, you are, you're like the armbands. <laughs> you're like the rubber ring. You're like the life buoy. That you never leave us to just wade through it on our own, Lord. You're there, you're constant. You know how far we can go each day. You know how deep we can go and how much we can handle and you're always there to help us. 
So Lord, 2024, let it be a year that we go deeper. Lord, as living sacrifices, renew our minds. Grow us in greater capacity to love ourselves, to love each other and to love you. And let our lives be an offering for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy New Year. Be great to see you on Tuesday night as we pray, Monday night, Monday morning as we pray. Be great to see you during the week. The hub is open. Tuesday night, come and pray as we talk about how to be unsuccessful. And let's get ready to grow deeper. Jesus loves you. And so does Matthew. Amen. <laughs>